Hello my friends, welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez, thank you for joining me. In today's episode, we're covering the tragic death of Gabrielle Brittany Ulaki on March 8th of 2020. It was the last time anyone would see Gabrielle Ulaki alive. Three days later on March 11th, her body was found in the Burner Basin area of Spring Creek. This is about 15 miles from Elko, Nevada. And this was three days after being seen getting into the green Ford F-150 pickup in front of the Spring Creek High School around 4 p.m. At the time, right away, the Elko County Sheriff's Department said that they are investigating this as a homicide. So we knew right away she was murdered. Rest in peace, Gabrielle. Taken way too soon. This girl was so loved by so many people. She had such a bright future ahead of her. She loved the rodeo. She loved being on the horses. She loved everything about it. She was so so well loved by everyone around her and this coward who wanted more from her than she wanted to give decided to do the unthinkable and we'll get into that coward as well but right now this is all about Gabrielle taken way too soon Gabrielle she was truly truly loved and people have continued to comment two years later they will never forget what she has done in the little short world she got to live in. She had a heart of gold. She was so loving. She was the type of person you enjoy being around because of the energy they brought. You loved being around her. People absolutely loved this girl. Rest in peace, Gabrielle. And as soon as this was all starting to come out, a lot of tips started getting reported to the sheriff's office. You know, they had so many tips, information. People were, were, they wanted answers and people were willing to give answers as fast as they can think of it. And at the time that, she, that they knew that she went into this green Ford F-150, they did not know if she knew the person she was getting into the truck with. And right away, sheriff's office was letting everyone know in the public that there has been no information to indicate that this is a danger to the public. So they knew that it looked like it might have been someone who targeted her. And it wasn't just someone running around killing everybody. And at the time of her disappearance, Ulaki was wearing a gray hoodie and blue, a gray hoodie sweatshirt and blue jeans. Less than three weeks later, they make an arrest. Another teenager who was her friend was 18 years old at the time of his arrest was arrested bryce dickey of spring creek nevada was arrested for her murder after his and britney's dna were found on a used con d-o-m you know what that means i don't know if youtube wants me saying that word either and so this c-o-n dom was found at the crime scene. And so with that, it helped track down the killer of the 16 year old, Gabrielle Ulaki. Police also found keys on a lanyard with the name Brittany on it near the partially clothed and partially covered body of what turned out to be Brittany on March 11 in Burner Basin area. And as I mentioned, this is about 15 miles outside of Elko, Nevada. Bryce Dickey, he was a long time friend of her. And this con, D-O-M, it had both his and Britney's DNA on it. Prosecutors charged him with open murder with use of a deadly weapon. Or in the alternative, felony murder during sexual assault or attempted sexual assault with the use of a deadly weapon. And so they found the used con, D-O-M, and the rapper to it. And this lanyard with her name Brittany on it is what the cops used to track down Bryce Dickey. And so everyone knew that Gabrielle was getting into this vehicle because she told her father she was getting a ride with longtime family friend Bryce Dickey. And when, when Brittany didn't come home 
Later that night, her family called police, who then contacted Bryce. And Bryce told police that he dropped her off at the high school and saw her get into a green F-150 Ford pickup truck with a pretty tall white male wearing a cowboy hat and even later provided further details about the mysterious green Ford truck. He told police that it had two stickers on the left rear window and a toolbox in the bed of the truck. So Elko police then filed a missing person runaway report the day after she was last seen alive, requesting information about a green F-150 truck, even setting up a tip line. The green truck later turned out to be a lie that Bryce Dickey made up to mislead investigators. In subsequent interviews, Bryce tells police that he had been driving around with Ulaki for about three and a half hours before taking her to Spring Creek High School. He also showed them Snapchat text messages he had sent to Ulaki asking if she was okay and where she was at. Police say that on March 11th, a deceased female was found that was partially covered by a tarp and was partially clothed. They said that blood was found near the edge of the roadway with a trail of disturbed earth leading to the body. After Ulaki's body was positively identified on March 13th, Bryce was again interviewed at the police station where detectives notated that some of his statements contradicted earlier statements. During the interview, Bryce describes the clothing that Brittany was wearing at the time he was with her, which also matched the clothing she was wearing on her body and confirmed she was in possession of a cell phone and lanyard of keys. Bryce, he agrees to voluntarily sign a consent form and provide a DNA sample. March 14, 2020, police go back out to the crime scene again, and this time they find a set of earbuds and a used C-O-N-D-O-M that was found. And DNA on that later tested positive for both Bryce and Brittany. Four days later, the police received the lab results back and found that Ulaki's DNA profile on the exterior of the CON dumb and Dickie's DNA profile was located on the interior of it as well. Now, days earlier, Bryce denied to police of ever having sexual relationship with Britney, but in a police interview on March 19th, when confronted with the evidence, he confessed to having sex with her on March 8th with a with one of those protection things. And so he was then arrested. Search warrants were served on residencies associated with him. They find a pair of boots and a sweatshirt and both of them have blood on it. Now, Travis Johnson, a friend of his of Spring Creek, Nevada, and a childhood friend of him, he said, I'm still in shock over this. I can't believe it. Travis, he says that they all knew each other. He says, we come from a small town. Everyone knows everyone. Bryce was the type of friend that would give you the shirt off his back. He was as mellow as anyone I've ever met. I just can't believe he killed Brittany. He was like her big brother. He never said anything sexual in nature about Britney. So I gotta be careful who you trust. It does not matter that he's never done something like this. There had to be something inside him waiting to come out. Because let's be real, you're talking about taking someone's life. You have to be as evil as it comes to take someone's life. Unless it's self-defense and you're protecting yourself. There's no self-defense here. He goes on and says, Brittany was this smart girl that everyone liked. She had high morals. As far as I knew, she was still a virgin to the best of my knowledge. The night that Brittany had went missing on March 8th, Travis says that Dickie called him around 9 p.m. that night and told him that Ulaki had been reported missing and wanted to know if he wanted to go out looking for her in the burner basin area. He says he told Bryce he couldn't go with him that night because he already had plans, but he now wonders why Bryce wanted to specifically look in the area where her body was found 
just days later. Over the next few days, Travis says that Bryce didn't have much to say when it came to Britney. And he even asked Bryce if Bryce had spoken to the police since he was one of the last people to see her the day she disappeared. And Bryce says, yeah, I've spoken to the police on several occasions and, and they are all up in my ASS. And Travis even added that the day that Bryce was arrested, the police pulled a rouse on him. Travis says the police told Bryce to come down to the station so they can discuss some new information with him about the green truck. So as Bryce drove into the Elko County Sheriff's Office, he was arrested. You know, and at the time, Travis said he wasn't convinced that Bryce who he had known since kindergarten was the killer. He didn't think he was guilty at that time. He said, I want to see more evidence linking him to the murder. But then Travis added, I guess you really never know someone and what they are capable of. You know, and then you look at all these people that knew Bryce, there were other friends as well. They were, they could not believe that Bryce was capable of doing this. And you know, as humans, we have a tendency to snap and we hope that we're never this stupid, right? You know, but this is why I do this channel because we have to be careful of who we let into our life. Pay attention to the red flags. Be careful what you do and who you trust. I learned that myself. There are people who I was best, I was best friends with. We don't even talk anymore, right? Life goes on, things happen. But at that very moment, you felt like you would know each other forever and talk forever, be best friends forever. Things change. And so you had all these friends. There was another friend of both Brittany and Bryce and he was like, I would have never thought Bryce was capable of doing this. I'm kind of summing it up. I would have never thought that Bryce was capable of, of doing something like this let alone to Britney. Even Britney's mom, she says she trusted Bryce all the way. She's blown away that Bryce was capable of this. She says the betrayal in this is unreal. Britney's mom says that she bought Bryce's story about the green Ford pickup hook, line, and sinker. She completely bought into his story. She says she even consoled Bryce at a balloon launch memorial for her daughter just days before his arrest. She even refers to Bryce as a psychopath because, you know, here he is looking directly in her eyes, sitting there celebrating her life with the family, and yet he was the one that prayed all of them even went out there looking for her. Britney's dad as well. He said he trusted Dickie and that the two had been friends for years through the rodeo community. You know, according to the dad, Britney referred to him as a really good friend. You know, and this is, these are the type of things that we got to be careful for because her dad even says she did trust everybody. She always saw the good. If someone did wrong, she would call you out in front of everybody. She was going to expose you for who you were come hell or high water. She didn't see through him. He had everybody fooled. Like, wow. And on the day that Britney's body was found, Bryce posted a link to a GoFundMe page on Facebook in honor of Britney. And then again, a couple days later on March 13th, he posted about Britney. And here what he posted. He has since taken this off of his Facebook page, but not before people got screenshots, right? He posted yesterday, we all received news that made us hit the floor. Around eight in the morning, we all started meeting up at my house to grieve and to mourn Britney's life, which was taken far too soon. That day I had tears of pain and joy. I wish she could have seen the amount of us that came together to honor you, sis. We love you so much, just know you won't ever be forgotten. You hear that? He referred to her as sis. Does it get more chilling than that? You freaking coward. That sends chills up my spine. I'm so angry at this dude. Like, I understand that humans are capable of so much. My gosh, only the sick can do this. Only someone who has mental health problems 
can do this. How did he fool so many people for so long? I don't know. I don't know him personally. I can't judge him, right? I could judge his actions. These were sick as can be. I can't judge his heart. I don't know his heart. But your actions say you need to stay in prison for the rest of your life because something inside you is messed up. And so Bryce Dickey, he was in jail without bond. He was assigned a public defender. At the time, they thought maybe he would be facing the death penalty. They did take the death penalty off the table. And so Bryce, the Nevada man, he was found guilty of R-A-P-I-N-G and fatally stabbing his teenage friend. Now Bryce Dickey, 20 years old now, he was convicted of first degree murder and sexual assault with a deadly weapon in the March 2020 killing of his friend, 16 year old Gabrielle Brittany Ulaki. And the jury, they unanimously voted to convict him of all charges after only four hours of deliberation and a week long trial. Bryce Dickey, who was the last person to see her alive on March 8, 2020, when he picked her up from Angel Park in Elko, her body was found three days later with a single stab wound to the neck. She was wrapped in a blue tarp and discarded in Burner Basin, a secluded desert in the area. I think it's interesting that on Facebook, on his profile, he has an intro that says, my buddies and I are the trouble in this town. No? I think you're the trouble. Bryce, I think you're the trouble. Not your buddies, you're the trouble. You have a heart of stone if you're capable of doing this. To someone you said was your sister. To someone that you must have had these crazy, scary feelings, or you just felt like she should do whatever you want. Some big brother you turn out to be, right? And so, the police, they began to suspect him due to conflicting reports he gave them about the last time he seen her. Now, a girl who previously dated him, she testified in court that he had choked her on four occasions during their 18-month relationship. And looking at relationship, it looks like back in 2017, he was pretty serious with someone. And this may be her that you see on your screen because he was definitely in a relationship with her. Well, there you have it, my friends. The tragic case of Gabrielle Ulaki, 16 years old, taken way too soon in this world. Rest in peace, Gabrielle, rest in peace. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. Have a great one. Peace. <laughs>